talk to me. Thanks. Man. Well, you were sharing your thoughts on exactly. the um, intervention of the federal government mm. with regards to this problem. Exactly. I, and as I earlier pointed out, I said this is not the first time we have an issue in oil and gas sector because most of us have been following that sector. I understood that there are mystery, there are suspects, there are issues around that particular sector that most of us, maybe the public, will not understand how it works, particularly the challenge of governance, challenge of ethical processes that will allow that sector to work the way it works. Not of recent until the MUT said, okay, the IOC are the one creating problem for them to uh, be able to assess crude oil. Then from there, it moved to the issue of uh, so far or no so far. Then from so far to no so far, it moved to the issue of monopolization that he was accused of. Then before the government actually intervened. And it came out to quickly make uh, a, a, a resolution that is not trying to stifle competitiveness in that sector, particularly in the oil and gas sector, whether it is an open sector for everybody to engage in. But away from that, for me, it's about us to understand what is really happening in the oil and gas sector. A good question many people ask is that why is it that our refineries are not working? Why is it that government is not participating fully as expected in oil and gas? We have had four refineries that have gone to waste in the last uh, couple of years. Exactly. And, and this is almost like a beacon of hope for the country yeah, and, definitely. And, and the uh, oil industry in Nigeria. Mm. And yet, we see some certain elements, mm. some certain individuals mm. trying to frustrate uh, this move. It's not even just individual, it is group. And my understanding of oil and gas sector globally has shown that because of the cartel, because of the, the movement of oil and gas, and because oil and gas sector globally, the tiny majority of economic indicators and indices across the world. For instance, two weeks ago, we know that people are waiting for the oil price to determine rates. And it happens. Yes. Since yesterday, major central banks across the world are now looking at the body language or the, the fixing of rate to determine what they do about their rate. Whether I cut it or increase it. China yesterday have to downplay their rate. The central bank have to downplay their rate. Based on the incursion and the leading price of oil and gas across the world. So because of that peculiarity of oil and gas sector, it has become a challenge to developing countries like Nigeria to really pay the way that government participation can be fully done in a more severe regulatory way. We created the opportunity for uh, uh, the, uh, what we call it, the PIO to come in, the Petroleum Industry Act to come so that we can bring about the regulation. We can also give opportunity for people to participate and also ease the way of doing business in that sector. I think the, the, the Act is not even helping us at all. And the majority of people are like, okay, the act coming to help us to see the, the, the openness of that sector. We are yet to see it. This will help us to bring the private sector. Even the private sector are coming in the way still having challenges. So what I'm trying to point out, the oil and gas sector has the mystery that, that has not been revealed or unravel. That is why we are having challenges that individuals are going to come in. And guess what? People have been given licenses since 19, 2003 under the Basel government to be a final but they refuse. But somebody came in the refinery, we also give opportunity for a middle refinery to come into stream, but because of crude oil issue, they could not as produce or refine. And that goes back to the failure of NNPC from the beginning. Many of us have argued that how come the NNPC will employ chemical engineer, engineer of also, but they don't have the capacity to, to explore. Not just refine, to even remove the crude oil from the ground. They have to rely on joint ventures. So if we don't understand the foundational challenge that we have, the one that Bangote just exposed us to, we may be to solve it, even though politically, they want to use political uh, arrangement to solve the challenge by coming, calling the NNPC, calling any NNPRD, NURPR, all of them together, and then we say we can talk about the software issue and the rest of them. But this challenge will still remain if we can do it. We're still, still talking about the software issue. Mm -hmm. now, yesterday, on uh, some of the national dailies, mm -hmm. we saw uh, where Bangote was, you, you know, stating mm. clearly that the um, purity mm. of, of uh, products that his refinery produces mm. is way higher than what NNPCL and you know all these other uh, oil stakeholders mm. import into the country mm. for Nigerians to use and and yet they yeah. are accusing him mm. of having high sulfuric content in, in the product it, it, was the, it was the politics and, and, and he went for that mm. to state that, that uh, Ahmed Farouk mm. is not knowledgeable enough mm about the industry that he is in to be able to make such passes and judgments mm. and you know others have also called for a sack of the <laughs> NNPRA boss exactly. what do you think? Exactly. Even I myself on the sister station is that for 
is mover. It wasn't just yesterday that many of us are making for a mover. It has been six months ago there was a protest against him, and about eight months ago there was also an allegation against him that when a uh, polluted PMS was imported into this country, he was in charge. He was in charge. Mm -hmm. Then he was not made the head of uh, yeah, no, the sure. but he was in charge of importation of PMS through the private sector initiative that government normally. But he was in charge, but not was done. But then, mm -hmm. with a bigger position that is not heading. NMPRD. But the question still boils down to the issue of how come, because of the profiteering aspect of this business, and we need to also appreciate Dangote for exposing some of this, because if not, many of us are take white. Now, it was discovered that the diesel that have been imported have over 800 uh, 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 indications of how so far have been tolerated that particular diesel. Yes. And it came out on for his own. It's less than that, about 75 or 85 percent of that. So, what happened was that because of the cheap importation of those particular products, governments and people in government who are interested in keeping that as a secret doesn't want to expose it. So, so does that does that also um, bring us to the question of whether uh, there are oil cabals mm. running the industry in Nigeria, mm -hmm. yeah. and if they are, are they the ones frustrating some of these efforts and stagnating the progress of the oil industry in the country? Mm. Yeah, not just oil cabal. And they are in layers. We have the IOCs. They are followed by the local cabals, the owners of a uh, 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 filling station. They are in layers. Now the IOC have been exposed. We knew down that they don't want us to explore the crude oil. That's why when they ask them to put meters at the exploration pump site, yes. they refuse to put meters so that they can know how much they have been pumping out and how much they are selling and the rest of them they refuse. So there is no track record of that one. That one. And the reason why when was, uh, that was happening, government has to give us have a PIA, an act that will burn in the sector because NMPC was seen as, seen as a sacred cow. But we do with that and there is no effort. Then the second layer are the people who believe that importation must continue. Those are the ones that Dangote were having issues with. If you remember, because, because he is now trying to disrupt the system. Exactly, exactly. Because if you remember three months ago, there was a meeting between Dangote and independent portfolio marketers and importers that from July they begin to pick PMS from this refinery. Then there was also agreement that they begin to pick Jet A1, that is aviation fuel, as well as diesel from this place. And they all have an template agreement of pricing between 900 naira to 1000 naira per liter of a diesel. They all went into that agreement and they all started with the diesel. They all started with the Jet A1. But when that comes to them to begin to pick the PMS, which was supposed to be supplying to everybody across the country from the refinery of Dangote, that was when the bubble came busted. Because we now discovered that. That was when the night came out. Oh, we see a new stock of importation. We are new paying in advance for importation of PMS. That was when the problem started. And they said, we already have an agreement that you guys will start picking up PMS from my. But yesterday, after uh, the meeting was held, you know, there there wasn't really any formal statement with regards to the resolutions that were made mm. at the meeting. But mm. in your opinion and in your capacity as an economic um, analyst, what do you think um, viable solutions to this problem would be? The, the issue is this: we have a, a PIA that made the regulation confusing. There's one part. That talk about local content, refinery, refining product. There's one part that said we want to make the market brilliant and make the market ease for ease of building business and also allow investors to come in. They create great opportunity for importation. That's where the confusion starts. Now, for me as an economist, how long are we going to continue to rely on importation of PMS, diesel and kerosene? How long are we going to be giving opportunity for Shylock importers and greedy uh, 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 outlet owners? To continue to rely on importation of PMS and this one can see. Because as long as that section of that clause in that PIA is there, thank God there's going to be a review of that act. And I hope that they will have it opportunity to remove that particular clause because that becomes a, 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 a spanner thrown into the rules of our progress. You get it? So if we can stop importation, then there will be opportunity for people to think because the local content, even the executive order the first the previous time recently in the oil and gas sector, which allows for competitiveness of local content because local content that we knew before was about uh, doing a uh, piping for petroleum product. But the local content we are now seeing like that give opportunity for local refineries to take shape 
but we only with over 15 Mugula refiners that have been established. And one of the things that kept those Mugula refiners from not being productive was that nobody is giving them crew. And MNPC is not ready. Those on their body language, even though they are saying that have been signed, give this guy crew, but they will give the excuse that they are having joint ventures with IOC. For now, they cannot. And somebody, so a question has been thrown at them. The 450,000 by normally yes, through at the uh, a protocol refinery one and two, one refinery and one refinery. Where is it going? Well, well, well now, now the, the members of the House of Representatives mm -hmm. are, are, you know, setting up a panel to probe the crude oil shortage mm -hmm. in the country. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there is a visible um, fuel crisis that is looming. Well, according to reports here, it says that marketers are projecting a 700 billion <laughs> naira monthly subsidy mm -hmm. on, on, uh, you know, fuel. Hmm. What do you make of this? Mr. There is there is something we need to unravel around this subsidy issue. Firstly, why, there, why is there a shortage? There is nothing like shortage. As an economist, if you understand the principles and the this the, the understanding around supply and demand in determining price of goods and services, you discover that businessmen, shallow goody ones, use that principle to create artificial scarcity create anonymous uh, issues around a particular product to create scarcity and to jack up the price. Yes. I'll give you a, a, a classical example. Yes. There was no increase in the price of crude oil okay. in the last one month. Yes. But you know that is the current price, depot price that we are experiencing, where police station go and pick their product from the depot yes. and bring it to the city center as well across the country, there are issues that crude oil prices have increased. Yes. And the this understanding we also make, I've said it on this platform several times. There are four different types of crude. There's burning light, mm -hmm. there's burnt, yes. there's open basket, and there's WTI. Do you mind to share what the differences are? Now the differences are this. The cheapest of them all is WTI. It is American West, Western Texaco oil. That is, that was gotten from the soil of America. Yes. The open basket are the majority of open uh, members yes. who don't have Brent or Bruni Light. Nigeria is the owner of Bruni Light. That's our crew. That was our own rig. Oh, yes. Then the Brent is the one that is gotten from other uh, countries that are also strong uh, oil producing like countries. Saudi Arabia and the rest. Uh, exactly. Now, Bruni Light and Brent are the most expensive. They are the ones that compete in price. And all forget it. Yes. Now, ask yourself, of all the PMS who have been gotten in Nigeria, which of them is made from the vanilla air uh, brand? Nobody can tell you, and it's the most expensive. But these guys came in last month and said we should begin to tag our oil price locally with the price of crude oil in the international market. I'm going to it, paint it, it, it cannot work. It cannot work. I'm going to paint the picture of how greedy certain individuals in an economy sector are. The scarcity they are talking about, there's nothing like scarcity. Tomorrow, OPEC uh, 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 volume is yes. two million. Yes. A lot of there is even a glut. You know, they're going to say there will be a scarcity of food. There's going to be a glut in a way that there will be oversupply of food because geopolitical uh, geopolitical tension across the world in this in, in the Asia. I mean, in the what you call it, in the in the Arab world, even though it was very considered to be very high, but we can see that there is a little bit. The tension is gradually coming down. In YouTube, but not as we expected it. Then in the Russian Ukraine world, the tension is not as we normally see before. So those factors that normally shape the shipment, the transportation, the logistic of supplies of goods and services, including oil, as it was affected before, it wasn't as it has been affected now. It's just a reason that Russia began to uh, turn the uh, Ukraine with more bomb than the rest of them. But we can understand that there is a little bit of isolation of this problem that affected supply of goods and services and mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. that region. So that would have been the problem they would have laid. And when these guys are giving the excuse that it man, they don't have that strategic understanding to give that this excuse with cogent logical reason. They will just open up their mouth and say there will be going to be scarcity. Ask them what are the causes, what are the factors, what are the indicators that they have uh, uh, in this scarcity, they will just keep quiet. And when the when the common man hears this, he so he creates some, panic, creates panic across the country, uh, and exactly, and thereby creating this illusion mm -hmm. of shortage exactly. of, of uh, petroleum products in the and country. And NAPU can come and we have about thirty million in our storage. Anybody will counter them with that. Well, the, the Nigerian Senate has recently come out to say that um, you know the saboteurs in the mm -hmm. petroleum industry 
are an issue of national security exactly and that if something is not done in time mm. to curtail this issue exactly it might have damning consequences mm. for future generations so, in your opinion what strategic measures mm. realistic measures mm. do you think can be taken to quell some of these saboteurs and rid them uh, you know of the powers they have in the system number one let us review the pi act the sabotage can be treated with the pi act one and two is that the aspect that give opportunity for importation in the name of helping to reduce the supply gap by local production yes let us remove it let us rely on self-sufficiency by local production then number two the four refineries must work if they don't work because as long as some of us have understood what is happening within that refinery it is the same sabotage that are causing challenges using propaganda against the refinery and using the machinery within the same system within the nmpc to ensure that the refinery doesn't work how many times have they shifted the goalposts just one of the refinery that they say they work since 2019 that military took over as a gmd of nmpc before it now transformed into ceo of mm -hmm. nmpc it has always been promising here and there. A lot of MOU have been signed with. Now the Votaco Refinery One have promised. They said they will work. We hope that by December, as they promised to work. The Cabina, the same thing. The Worry, the same thing. Then the Votaco Two. They even have haven't haven't we been hearing of such promises since forever? We, we, and, and Nigeria yeah. have, has has had for for more than five decades. Definitely. Now. But the issue is that we will keep oh. arming on these promises. We will keep charging them. The minister, the two ministers of the petroleum sector have visited them, visited those areas. Then uh, the Senate committee, the House of all of them, are, even labor, everybody has visited that place and said, okay, it's that mechanical stage. What is left is the automation stage whereby to begin to crack crude oil. We are all waiting for that stage. But the issue is that if those refineries don't work, if government don't take charge, other members of OPEC, their government doesn't relax when it comes to oil and because they discover that the enemy in the oil and gas sector are more than the enemy within that you can think because the enemy are very powerful why do you think that across the world when they say oil theft oil theft oil theft nobody have able to track an oil that was theft was, well, either in nigeria or any other that, that was stolen anyway they can but there are cases where where some of these um, the tankers mm. you know, were caught mm. and even burnt on on our waters by, that was, they did by, by security agencies and that was not expected although they gave reason why they burned it so that that oil, that, that particular oil will not be stolen by another thief. You understand? That's why they burn it. But it has a very repute effect on the environment of that area where it is born. But what I'm trying to say is that the international, the international oil and gas sector, there are a lot of issues within how transportation and accountability have been jettisoned because of what is happening within that sector. But for us locally, we must be able to treat that sector in a way that the interests, our national interests, will be protected. So if government doesn't take hold, the Saudi Arabia we're talking about now. The Kuwait members of open strong ones they the government take charge they are in the production and the uh, supply chain value of their oil and gas they didn't just allow in likes of ipma to come and begin to change them begin to use rhetoric and all manner of language to confuse the people and confuse them like what they are saying they're going to be there's nothing like scarcity let us tell ourselves there's nothing like when in even in other sector of the economy in that big when businessmen or producers are saying there'll be scarcity just know that they are looking for opportunity to jack up their price or to increase the price of that. So that, that, that is the monopoly that, 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 that they are accusing Dangote of, of doing. Even though it's quite different from that of Dangote they are accusing. Because what they are accusing them to do, they go back to the issue of cement business. Yes. How long ago they came into the cement business? How government gave him that support to not become the most powerful cement producer, yes. not just in Nigeria, including in West Africa yes. and Sub Saharan Africa. Yes. So that is the fear. And we are not even afraid of the monopoly. What I'm even after is how this man can oversupply the entire Nigeria with PMS. And he's already on track. Very well. Mm -hmm. While being frustrated, mm -hmm. he has, you know, angrily called on NNPCL to yeah. take over his refinery if they deem fit and see if they can run it. No, I think that was just considering <laughs> considering the track mm -hmm. record mm -hmm. of having failed exactly. to to uh, run for major refineries in the country. Exactly. Not just for including the one they have helped in some corporate body to set up. The model of that you see that was set up in Bayesa, in Rivers, in Cross River, in Edo, was as a result of initiative and engineering of NMPC. 
Those ones are not working. Yes. So even Dangote throwing that as a car to them, come and take over. You know that it's just a joke that if you know that you can do it because he's throwing it back to that after we have four in your that you can one. Say. So that's what he's trying to do. Well, he, he, the cause of the matter is this. If the Nigerian government failed to appropriately take charge of the oil and gas sector, then the future of our young ones will be big when it comes to the supply of PMS, kerosene and the rest of them. We will continue to rely on the protection. Businessmen in this sector of industry, the only way to keep their business stronger is so use propaganda against the government. And so the government is doing These same guys have had the opportunity to have incentive tax holidays in this oil and gas sector, but they will never appreciate that to that to compensate the public or to compensate the Nigerian people with no good quality product, rather they will engage in bringing and treated uh, for into the country, which damaged cars and even polluted our environment. So we must call out the government that at this point in time, just look at the mirror and look at your colleagues in the OPEC, the Russian oil, the Brazilian oil, all of them, the government, government are involved. They don't just allow both the downstream and upstream to be taken over by individuals that are at the end of the day looking for profit. Well, to, to wrap up on this particular issue, you know, um, uh, there certainly has to be a way forward exactly. uh, with regard to um, the warring parties mm. and you know also finding a long-term solution to the oil problem that we have always had in this country. Mm. Uh, what is your um, honest opinion, mm. a viable solution uh, to all of these challenges? I think the big way forward is this. They have all come to one table that have discovered that it cannot be solved by using the media or doing so much of education on the media or just tackling me, tackling you. No, the media is in their account. Now, NMPRD, what is your stake? What are your regulation uh, factors? What do you want Dangote to do? Dangote, these are the things they want you to do. Just go over and get it done. NMPC, you have the bigger responsibility. You're supposed to supply this guy crude. Don't allow him to go and bring WTI into the country. WTI is the most cheapest of all crude. We don't need that. We need a more quality crude like our bony light. Supply him and let him have the crude. The Ipman also must be bring to the picture. Ipman must take supply from Dangote. They must not tell us the excuses of uh, we have paid uh, some refineries outside. We must do take crude from him. Him. Even if I will grow Nigerian business. And we, I want you to understand this. Uh, Dangote is not just targeting the Nigerian uh, uh, market. It's targeting the entire West Africa. And Bet me, his plan is that after after successfully ensuring that the Dangote refinery in Nigeria works, the same way he went to Zambia, the same way he went to uh, Congo and other West, uh, South, South Africa African and Southern African countries to establish um, a cement factory. That is how you go there to establish a refinery to be able to produce and help African economy. They should understand that the international oil companies that we can mention their names, how much of them are doing refinery in West Africa or in Africa? We can mention one of them. They have even had the opportunity to build. Government have given them the opportunity to build, but they refuse to build. This one man has done it. 15 others have done to Modula if I supply this guy crude oil and let us have a better uh, PMS for the country and kerosene and the rest of them. Well, thank you, uh, Ade Fularin, Thanks for, uh, for sharing your thoughts on this. Well, the NLC chairman, the NLC uh, uh, leader, Comrade Joe Ajero, has urged the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to engage with leaders of the planned anti-government protest with the hashtag End Bad Governments to have a talk with them and forestall effects, damning effects of um, the protest. To shed more light on this today, uh, we are still in the studio with uh, our analyst and uh, newspaper reviewer who will be throwing more light on it. Mm. There is a planned protest mm. coming up mm. on the 1st of August. Exactly. And uh, tensions are high. Mm. The House of Representatives are calling on you know the planned protesters to desist from it the senate yeah. has also hammered on it yeah. and now we are seeing the nlc uh, chairman joe Ajero urging the president to intervene mm. as well mm. the president on his part has also made a statement concerning this mm. are we seeing a return of another NSAS protest in this guys mm. that is exactly and for the nlc president uh joe Ajero, I think the protesters, planner are faceless as far as some of us are concerned. If you ask him to come and speak to me, he's going to speak with They're faceless. Already, they, they, they consider themselves to be faceless, just like the way instance was done. Although instance, 
not that they are faceless in return but they are faceless in terms of having to have contact with them because they were not people who were ready to share their guns on what they want to do yes then for this particular one i think there is a, a mix a mix feeling feeling and a mix uh, 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 plan group yes there are people who are open to be part of the plan you can see their face those ones are the people that are considered to have been part and parcel of 2023 general election we will start then there are people on the other side who are not into politics they are just mere nigerians who understand that what is happening right now need to attract government at attention those are the ones that come from the background of the answers but these other ones that nlc may be calling could be end up become politicians who lost out in the last election they who are also looking for opportunity a seat in the table of government. Well, this your statement also draws our attention to uh, a publication yesterday mm -hmm. by First News where um, Onamuga was insisting that uh, Obi supporters and IPOB members are behind the planned nationwide protest. If you ask me, rather a little bit unguided, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, well, let's let's quickly uh, take a look at that. NLC begs Tinubu to engage planned protest leaders. Mm -hmm. Just above the, that caption, it says, "You can't smack a child and ask them not to cry." President, talk to youths, according to uh, Senator Ali Ndume. Hmm. I, I want to you must understand is that if you go to the social media, I've organized protests before, I've led protests before. You get it. The thing is that who are the major people pushing for this particular product? Who are the people talking about it regularly? When you get the data of those people, you can lay claim that these are the people planning it. You get it. But if you don't see anybody talking about it, you don't see anybody agitating for it, you are you can tag that person, you are the planner. But as long as you are the one doing the most twist, most post about it, everybody can refer you to ah, it's like you are one of the organizers of that particular protest. So but the issue still remains that for me. It's yes. just for government to address the grievances. And it is not federal government to address. But the reason why many people are tagging federal government to address the grievances was that it is believed that the policy of the federal government was the one that is causing the challenges yes. within yes. our economy. And you cannot take it away from that. Because the number of subsidy, the forex, uh, multiple forex uh, address reform that the government carried out, which of these two led to some of these uproar, some of these turbulence in the economy. But on the government side, these are the things they feel that to be better for us. But the other thing is that how many people are asking the question, okay, after government have removed subsidy, there's money that has been generated that have increased the budget alloc I mean further fact allocation to state governors. Why are we not asking our governors questions? Why are we not taxing them? Why are we just okay? I'm going to do a protest in Lagos. I'm from Lagos and I'm going to do a protest in Lagos against governors so no, for not doing A B C. Why take the burden to federal government? Although we can understand because this federal government have a share of all the allocations, the so they should also do better. Yes. But it has been discovered since 1999 to do that. Most of the federal government is doing a particular policy. It goes to the state to implement the policy. Federal government doesn't have any place to implement any policy. That's why someone asked me on the sister session yesterday that in the 2020 lives the government is going to federal government is going to share now. Is the federal government going to share by himself? I know, say no, they are taking me to state. To the state when you get to the state, they share. He said with every policy that you are seeing that federal government is doing. And then in agric, in security, in education. Apart from education that we can say they have further investing in military school, about 120 of them, or 111 of them. Then which other agency or which other thing that you see that federal government is doing? Although we also call them out to do things practically. But we already know the political arrangement in Nigeria. You want federal government to do anything, the state will be waiting. They will say, okay, we have the people to implement this policy. Take for instance, the National Economic Council, when there was this issue about data, I mean, so, uh, social register. Yes. Then they say, okay, when federal government say we have our own social register, the state say, no, we, we can't rely on your social register. Let us go and conduct our social register by ourselves. Till tomorrow, this state has come out with its own social register. So how is government going to now address the issue of palliative? When is that? It is the same government that will hand over some of this thing to the state to go and implement. And it will not be done in a way that it will carry everybody along. Now, you see, in, in the last 100 days or so in the mm. country, uh, we have seen a speed of about seven very deadly protests that mm. are taking place. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, from the Abowemans mm. right, mm. all the way down to 2020 when we had the, the NSAS protests. Mm. And now mm. we have 
another protest that is looming and from all indications from all indices this is about to be yet another protest that will likely not end well but i want you to hold your thoughts on that let's quickly take a look at the daily times newspaper mm. as well as the nigerian news direct on the front cover of the daily times newspaper it reads uh, just below the masthead nlc to tinubu address public grievances amid looming national protest of course this is according to uh, the nlc president uh, comrade joe Ajero. Mm -hmm. he urges presidents to invite protest organizers for dialogue Tinubu, traditional religious leaders caution youths against planned protests and on the front cover of the first news uh, it is also captured uh, with the NLC president begging the, pres uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to engage planned protesters uh, let's also take a look at the Nigerian news direct hmm. no protest needed we are tackling hardship economic downturn hmm. Tinubu appeals food inflation we share your pain halved our salaries according to the speaker of the House of Representatives Dialogue with protesters, avoid confrontation, again NLC President Ojis FG. Can, label, students, union, others, disown planned protest. Mm. That is to show that, you know, even government will engage with put, uh, protest planners. It is this set of people, student union, labor, you see that labor is in there. Yes. And serious activists who understand the human rights activists are not part of it. Now, that's why I said that they, they have there are, there, are, there are faces that you can see who are planning protests and there are faces that you cannot see. And there's nothing about this protest. I've been a little bit critical about it, trying to shade on and understand that if you see protests coming up in Nigeria in the past, the face behind the number one face behind it is labor. After labor, you see several human rights activists, Government. academicians, also, all of them giving the bite. You know, giving the bite to it. But when I see the protests like this coming up, and, and and everybody is washing their hands off of off it. Now you have discovered that the plan protest is coming from another segment of individuals and group who feel that since they are not part of this government, let us lock it. We must be very critical about it. Yes. And the fear is this. Everybody loves protest. I think if I have no protest, I've been part of I've organized protests to national assembly and other government agencies. But the fear is this. Ooh, how the protest will end, just like you already put it out. Will it end well? Will it get us objective point that we have set for ourselves? Because we must have an objective. Yes. Now, if you are saying you want to protest so that food price will come down, so are you calling that the government should begin to instigate or put into policy price control? Because the major issue right here is how things are very expensive in Nigeria. So, if you okay, government, do something about this. Attend to this particular thing. The only thing government can do is to let us initiate price control. Yes. Because it has gone out of hand. It has gone out of hand. Yesterday, someone was telling me that a new job base that has been sold 900 naira in Adama, here in Abuja, has been sold for 4,000 naira. I mean, ask what cost it? Yes, me that anybody will give me a cost of transportation. Now, the only cost of transportation, what is the cost of transportation? What is the cost of to say diesel and fuel? Then it's okay, but the price has remained this for the past eight months. They say no. It is different location price that is affecting it. But the value around the price of wood of goods to be this high, what between 4,000 and 4,000 is seats of power. power. Of you need to ask yourself the question. So, but e, 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 to, to, to need to answer this in a way that we can all understand that shit protest is this. Yes. Protest show to government that citizens are not happy with what you are doing. But when that protest doesn't have an objective end, because the, the, the the other side of this protest is that that we see the tag under the protest is to the must go and bad governance to must go. That was the same thing they did against President. So, so this is this is this is likely not a protest mm -hmm. for uh, you know the prices of food commodities mm -hmm. to come down. That it's not a protest for for better living wages. It's not. I mean, of course, the NLC and the FG have re reached a resolution. Exactly. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a protest for security to return mm -hmm. to our communities. Mm -hmm. It's a protest aimed at upsetting the current administration. That is. Let's put it down. That is how it is. And the people who are trying to pull that out want it to be done so that maybe when it happens that way, this government will go, any government will come. Then they will now 
have something coming out, they will not call for a new election. We will be able to anal anal critically analyze the essence of why these protests because the people that we believe that have been holding strong protests, like the 2012 protests, even the answers that we never participated in it, but they have already washed their hands off it. Well, Mr. Adifonarin, you earlier stated that. Um, you know they want the federal government to put their hands in the matter of food prices exactly but the fg on its part has uh, sort of stated that it is releasing palliatives mm. food palliatives to states mm. but a report on the leadership newspaper this morning uh says that about 21 states are yet to receive their truckload of grains mm -hmm. even one week after the federal government has said that it has you know released these grains but let's just quickly take a look at the leadership newspaper on the front cover of the leadership newspaper uh it goes with the lead story fg palliatives one week after 21 states await truckloads of grains anambra acquirable biosa quara river state delivery labor asks Tinobu to dialogue with protest leaders yobi won't join protest says governor Maima Labuni. Mm. definitely a lot of state will opt out because as I have pointed out, if you are going to protest, protest against your government why the economy of your state is not working, why your state is not generating yes. employment for your people and the rest of that. But on this particular food palliative that we are talking about, definitely all the states will get it. And also remember, some states could even get hunger and hide it the way they eat the other one, being to the point that it was the ancestors and now open up the way out those food were kept. Sometimes this food could get to the state government but they'll be waiting for the other batch before they start distributing some of these I, I, are you seeing are you seeing a particular trend here the last mm -hmm. time in 2021 mm -hmm. was an answer mm -hmm. protest mm -hmm. right the federal government had dished out the exactly. COVID-19 palliatives mm -hmm. and these palliatives were hoarded and mm -hmm. kept in store in warehouses exactly. and not given to the people mm -hmm. and there was a protest which unraveled mm -hmm. the dirty exactly. works behind it mm -hmm. yet now there is a lot of planned protests mm -hmm. whether good or bad Mm. we can't tell for exactly. now mm -hmm. but there is still another palliative that has been released by the federal government mm. to mitigate the effects of hunger mm. in the land mm. Mm. are we seeing a repetition of what happened in 2020 with regards to the palliatives that the federal government has given out to the issue that the federal government have been doing is own maybe not too good for us as what we expect but it has been doing its own, it has been doing its own responsibility. Yes. So what left with the state? Why are they keeping the palliative? Just the way they did it in 2020. They kept the palliative away from people. In the ranch, they were waiting for 2020 election to come and be using this as a political game to be sharing it. But we don't expect that to happen at this point in time. But the key question still goes back to state governors. What are you doing to solve the economic challenge in your state? A lot of people are living their state in numbers migrating to city centers like Abuja and the rest yes. of other big cities. So what is happening to the state? So if the state government are not doing anything to resolve challenges at the state level, if they are just waiting for federal government parity, then the question is going back to all the federal locations we have recorded. What are we doing for? Although some of us have challenged that palliative method of the government, it is cosmetic. Yes. It doesn't last, although they are also replied and it's a short term to medium term policy yes. to just push on the effect. But it doesn't get to the right people. That's not that point. It doesn't get to the right people. A palliative will get to FCT now. FCT will collect this palliative, the 2012 load of rice. The FCT minister and the FCT minister of state will collect it. Now, there are six area councils. There are 64 political world. This is where the rice will go. And there are nine indigenous people in FCT that are regarded as owners of Abuja. They will get it. So those of us that are from other places that are not part of the political world, that are not part of the nine indigenous people, that are not part of the FCD staff, because the last rice that was shared, that was given to FCT, it, the civil servants in FCT, all of them collect a bag, including cleaner collected bag, one bag each. Of rice. Of rice. So what about us that are not in FCD, what about us that are not FCT indigenous, that are not close to the political world, are not members of the political world? Where will our rice come from? Well, we find us back to our state. Yes. That's what it means. And you can't travel all the way back for because of one bag of rice. One bag no, 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 it's not necessary. So, what we are asking is, let's go and do something that is more sustainable. How can we ensure that we cushion the price of goods and services. It's not by raising grains from the reserve. No. It's about tackling the small I mean, the middlemen a uh, profiteering gang a game they are playing. I just give an example for them where a million of beans is being sold for nine hundred naira. And here, here it comes down to four hundred four thousand naira. What is the cost? Okay, transportation cost. What else is the problem? 
It's perfect. But, but uh, in, in your opinion now, do you think that um, empowering local governments mm. uh, with which the federal government has just granted exactly. them an autonomy mm. would help in, you know, bringing the dividends of mm. some of these um, policies mm. or democracy as exactly. we know it exactly. to the grassroots? Because mm. Of course, we know the federal government is up there. Mm. Those with federal issues. Mm -hmm. The state government mm. uh, is the uh, body that used to receive mm -hmm. allocations and then disseminate it to local government exactly. areas. But now with an autonomy, mm. uh, LGAs are to directly receive their allocations mm -hmm. and use it to better the lives of people in, in you know, just rural areas and mm. communities. Mm. Is this another way you think uh, some of these challenges can be curtailed and people at the grassroots would have or feel the mm. impact of what the federal government is doing at the top? Definitely, it will, it will go a long way. On the, on the federal government side, the entire government structure in Nigeria, there is soft infrastructure and there is hard infrastructure. Now, the soft infrastructure majorly comes from the federal government, which means policy policy regulation to ensure that everything works smoothly. The hard infrastructure are majorly known, airport, seaport, and other uh, accessible uh, uh, assets that could aid the economy. Yes. Now, the local government is coming into it. Now, what would they be doing? They will focus on, on some soft infrastructure as well as some hard infrastructure. Majorly, road network, market, access to market, then farm and food production. So those are the things they will concentrate on. Then they will to generate you know, a substantive uh, employment for their people. Yes. Then creating access to food production is at the local government level. So that's why many people are saying that most of agriculture we even need that major since our majority of our food are coming from local government level, then we must concentrate food production at local government level. Then localization of industries to take away most of these industries that are set in city centers far away from where raw material are found. That is what local government will be doing for us. And we do find you get we need to attend to some of these challenges. But majorly, as I've understood, how good local government can be run is to focus on food production, whereby they can assist farmers, all these inputs and uh, farm instruments that government is sharing from the federal level. Local government will be able to do that easily and get their people to do the farm work and produce food for us. But when you not take it away from them and begin to concentrate at the center, then state governments are not even doing anything about agriculture. That's what they do. The only way for federal government to come with one policy about agriculture, then they will wait for subvention fund to tap into it and say they're also doing agriculture. They don't do. State governors don't do agriculture. I've had opportunity to ask questions. How come state governors don't have farm? It's really federal government that has farm. Federal government are under means of agriculture. Federal government has over 43 agencies. Including now that that was created eight years ago. Now that is Nigeria Agricultural Development Land Agency. That normally and, and that's why they, they can be able to dish out some of these uh, uh, palliatives to, to the exactly. state governments. Exactly. Ordinarily, the state government should also have reserves that they can give, give to, to their ability. They, they don't have. They don't have. So when they don't have, they only on the federal government and they use their skills that, okay, they don't have much money. Yes, how much are you spending? Some state government, their way big monthly is, let's say, four, five, six billion. So what do you do with the rest of the money? Talking about jobs, uh, Mr. Adifolarang, uh, captured on the front page of mm. the Guardian newspaper, there is rather a very uh, disturbing story mm. where it reads over 30,000 jobs lost to closure of manufacturing firms in mm. four years. This mm. is on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Mm. Over 30,000 jobs lost to closure of manufacturing firms in four years. Mm. And on the right there, uh, on page four, GDP ranking, it's been nine years of retrogression mm. will be lament. Mm. I want you to hold on to that statement. Mm. And just right next to uh, the Guardian newspaper is the Nigerian Tribune, bill to establish local government electoral commission. Don't undermine federalism, political parties, others won. Mm. These are two stories that are going hand in hand at mm. the moment. Mm. We mm. have a situation where in the last four years, mm. Over 30,000 jobs have been lost, mm. most likely breadwinners of their families. Exactly. Isn't this an adverse, isn't this having an adverse effect on how people, you know, react to what the government is currently doing? Definitely, we, 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 we may not even end it entirely on Nigerian government policy. Is a global thing. You know, global people are getting laid off due to economic, economic hardship. hardship across the world, particularly after you know, most countries are just recovering from the post COVID 19 era and yes. the companies are coming off. 
Mwenye so South Africa la like Nigeria Covid are not coming on whether so those who have survived the COVID nineteen are dying gradually. And we can quickly paint it or peg it to the peculiar challenge that we have. Yes. We have energy crisis in Nigeria, we have infrastructural challenges in Nigeria, we have policy some sort in terms of how businesses can go in Nigeria. We also have challenge of insecurity. They also have the problem of not being able to appreciate our local content material. Yes. All these things that we're talking about, majority of them import the things they use in producing into the country. They have no, I mean, and most of them understand that some of these materials are here to be explored from the ground, but they are not in case. So it's, it's, a, it's a confluence of different factors. But the one that we can really point to is that because of government failure to address some of the basic and fundamental issues in industries or making manufacturing to survive, which is power. We have not gotten our power within right. Electricity is still a challenge. Most companies rely on diesel your power generator to make their production to be very effective. Like your station here now, to, I won't be surprised if you are on gen. So that's how other businesses also survive on power generated. Yes. Then the issue, other issue has to do with the policy of the government in terms of physical policy, in terms of the law around taxes. A lot of business are telling you that they are being taxed on multiple levels. So because of that, they cannot survive. But I won't just blame the government for some of these things. If the companies are closing, there are some companies that are closed down as a result of understanding the peculiarity of Nigeria economy, that it is easier to be do to become an import, uh, a, an import and assembly company than be a full fledged manufacturing company. Now, Nigeria. now let's let's also uh, narrow it down to mm. the Nigerian Tribune now uh, with regards to the bill mm. to establish a local government electoral commission, mm. which is currently on the way. Exactly. <laughs> now. Uh, Political parties are warning that the federal that you know they shouldn't undermine federalism. Mm. Uh, are we seeing a kickback mm. at the policy or this bill now, mm. which is aimed at giving local governments the power that they need to actively uh, provide the dividends of democracy to their people at the uh, I, I would like to know which of the set of political parties are saying that they should not undermine. Well, people. it's it's not clearly stated. It's here. not stated. So it means that politicians are just trying to play their games. When the same politicians, political parties have been claiming that one, uh, both government elections were held in three states: Adamawa Delta, and uh, uh, do or uh, recently, yes. just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, who clinched all the local government elections. Chairmanship. We do not want the party in the state. Same party. Now we want to rescue that muscular nature of one political party in a particular state, controlling everything by using the instrumentality of the law to go to that area and allow the fresh air to come whereby an independent body will conduct election at the state level. So I don't think any reason political party will answer. So federalism is already there. Why do we have INEC? We would have said the letters of the people are called for the government of INEC, but what we are trying to point at this point is that we need an independent way to conduct local government elections. So that can be independently done the way it is expected. But but how 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 viable is this now, Mr. F uh, Ade Folarin, mm. that you would have a local government chairman in the states belonging to an opposition political mm. party or opposition political parties mm. and you know they the state governor would allow them function properly mm. the way they should because mm. uh, take a look at at a ball state for example mm. we we have seen a trend where there's almost no opposition party mm. in the state mm. it's just the ruling party mm. in adam state that is chairing the entire local government area and that's why this uh, idea is coming so that we can really make it more democratic because when more democratic is where independent elections are conducted then free election free and fair credible election can be carried out the people can vie for position without intimidation or threat yes you get it and that will also give opportunity for local government to strive even though we know that the political uh, threat will be there from the governor who sits at the top there controlling the local government but the key thing that will make that local government more functionable, more accountable, more transparent, so that we can ask local government quest uh, chairman questions that his funding is coming directly to him. So if the local government is in Adam Rwanda, let's say two or three of them are giving 10, 10 billion at the end of the month, you can ask their question, oh God, chairman, what do you do with the 10 billion now that governor is not controlling you? He will be able to answer. Then also that local government chairman will sit in that local government, he said they're going to be running up and down in Abuja or in other part of the country, he will sit in that local government and work. Then the staff of the local government will sit in the local government and work. That's, That's the essence of why. Yes, they are That's the essence of conducting a 
regarding the election for them and having a body although many of us have said that okay if you're going to have an independent body why don't you make it out of INEC let it be let it don't create an extra organization that like the National Assembly is pushing for let it just be a part and parcel of INEC maybe a department under INEC conducting local government election, election. Now that we are setting up a local government election commission, now we're going to set on that parallel period of the as big as INIC. That's the one with conflict of interest. There'll be conflict of interest because by the time, before you they will say they want to conduct their own uh, voters register. That's what will happen. They say, they will tell you that they cannot rely on INIC in, in voters register. Be, because, because... Uh, that is not meant for national election. National election. It's meant for national assembly, presidency. So they, have, they want to conduct their own. And it, it could be a fact because in the local government election, there's always voter party. Yes. People don't vote there. People don't care. Don't care. You don't vote at the government. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives the person maybe a few people who exactly. have some sort of stake exactly. in uh, that particular that's government. Thing. And again, for me, it also gives opportunity for independent election of Zara to begin to participate in the local government. We now see the NGOs or that donor fund will not be looking at local government election seriously the way we are looking at INEC and other elections that have been conducted. It also give us the opportunity. But issue still means that there could be conflict of interest particularly in voter register and how to manage the voter register in a few words now what is the way forward i, I think the way forward they have already put the motion the motion in, into in, in the bill into in the bill into motion yes. and they want it to be passed all we just need to say okay let, when it comes we also look at the gaps and the gains we have to wait but for me it would have been the other way around wait and it do it but now that it's there we're going to have another multiple a, 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 a activity that become that could become a conflict of interest for INEC, but we just want that to be managed as we go forward. All right, let's turn our attention to other matters. Talking about electricity uh, situation in the country, as captured on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper uh, today, it reads with the catchphrase "Electricity." why systems collapse won't end soon according to an investigation that can be found on page five of the vanguard newspaper goes further to say that 10 factors fueling nigeria's frequent system collapse frequency variation lack of scatter others responsible power up nigeria hold tcn responsible for system collapse experts say businesses pay for services they do not enjoy this is according to lcci no economy can make progress without stable electricity cppe quite a number of stakeholders there are making statements mm -hmm. uh, giving mm -hmm. their takes mm -hmm. uh, on the issue of electricity mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. uh, mr de Folaren. what do you make of this it's been a it's been an age-long business <laughs> exactly just like the oil and gas sector let me do another bigger monster in the house when it yes. comes to the nigerian house oil and gas sector mystery oil, uh, electricity uh, the confusion around it but we, recently the confusion has been set in a way that we can understand how to go about it an act has been established passing to law independent power generation so we should take hold of that we should take advantage of that all these system collapse that we're talking about will not be available under this new regime of the act the electricity act has been passed to law because nobody is supplying whatever is generated into the national grid anymore you generate, you give it to the environment that you have generated. That's what is happening. Although, because we are still relying on the national grid and the rest of it, that's why we are still talking about it. But another thing we need to understand there is this mystery of propaganda around the electricity sector that makes people to be confused. What as propaganda if, is that? As if nobody can invest in that sector. They create a lot of scary uh, uh, issues around it. Like the investigation that Vanguard have just done now, yes. To to it, it, as good as the investigation is, to some investors that want to come, down. see if this kind of challenges. I mean, because which of the which of the challenges that we normally pinpoint to is the bureaucratic nature and the governance nature of the electricity sector. I see there are laws that will keep you the moment you invest your money in it. So you must do away with such uh, uh, activities because it discourages people from investing. Although state governors need to be challenged. Because that law was purposely made. This new existence was purposely so that state governments can take advantage of it. Because in the past, most of them say, I am not to do independent power plant, but because of of, uh, of, the, of the national grid law, we cannot get into it. Now that laws have been unbound, you cannot go into independent power plant, you cannot go into partnership with the organization so they can build their own independent power plant. Yes. What is making them to be sitting aloof?
We need to ask that question. And for the individual that have been making money, they let them deregulate the, regulate the regulate system. It has not been deregulated in a way that you can now come in with your money and invest. Yes. So what is stopping many Nigerians or other well, 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 what, what, what adverse effects uh, would this have on, on businesses? Mm. Uh, we have seen businesses who rely solely on electricity mm. uh, completely reading themselves mm. of the pressure of having to rely on uh, electricity provided by the federal government mm. uh, rather they will just power up their their shops or offices with generators or mm -hmm. solar uh, uh, powered uh, batteries and mm. all and uh, people are finding alternative means of generating electricity other than what the status quo has been mm. this is in an adverse effect mm. having a uh, an economic uh, uh, sort of effect on their businesses. Exactly. But for you now, what what effects do you think uh, some of these challenges are causing? Cost of production. For every businesses that are making use of alternative source of energy that are different from the thermal generated plants that the federal government will provide or the national green that will normally supply to it across the country, yes. it is cost of production. Because when you add up what you have Curing yes from the alternative source like generating pan diesel cost gas source and you're using the power out and solar and the rest of them you add it on the cost of the production then you now put it on the huge price of your goods and services that you are providing one of the things why things are very expensive as we earlier mentioned when you're talking about food is that there are no storage facilities and companies that provide and providing food and beverages are also spending so much money to store those things that are producing so it brings a lot of cost on them so when there is lack of oil, there is no proper uh, uh, supply of electricity or no other electricity that could be less cost in nature, you now spend much on it, it will add to the price of your goods and services. That is one. Then two, you create an atmosphere where people will be afraid of investing because they know that the sources that will keep their production regular is energy and it is not there. So why are we going to invest? So what everybody is talking about is that because it is not sustainable, it is not well supplied, Businesses are dying, so they cannot sustain them. So those ones that rely on other sources are spending so much. Alternative sources of energy are very expensive. The solar, the batteries, are what you they are very, very expensive. The cheapest of them all is the one that we have through our thermal generated one. But because of lack of maintenance and lack of foresight on the part of government that is producing that, that thing is dying gradually. And we must also forget that it is also an international global issue. In the Western world, they have told us that we cannot rely on coal, we cannot rely on nuclear, we cannot rely on other sources of energy that is very cheap, that is not peculiar to our environment because we have the resources to do that. They deny us that. So they have not shown us that, okay, because of climate change issues, we should focus on the ones, what they call clean energy, which also move away from fossil fuel. So because of that, this conflict is not having the convergence whereby the government can okay, let this one want to face. In China till tomorrow, they are still using thermal energy source. They are still powering their to ban till tomorrow. You get it? Yes. Even though in Europe, a lot of nuclear plants have been shut down. But they are still looking at opportunity to ensure that this has a resistance supply. Coal that we have in abundance in Africa, yes. they say we should not use it. And that would have been one of the cheapest to power energy. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Al. At death allowing uh, online lake on for mm. sharing your thoughts on some of these national issues mm -hmm. uh, we are hoping to have you back in the studio sometime soon to mm -hmm. continue some of these uh, discussions thank you so much